Hey, so you remember those top stalls that I was so insistent on you learning during quarantine and that I gave you all kinds of crazy stall exercises to use with them and everything? Well, today I'm going to teach you another use for them, a beautiful type of poi trick that we call horizontal stacking. Drex here from DrexFactor.com bringing you poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today we are learning how to stack across a horizontal line because it looks really cool. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So I will totally confess that I'm a huge fan of horizontal stacking and I have been for a long time. Uh, basically, it's one of those things that I think that it kind of represents a microcosm of how hybrids and flowers work and it creates those wonderfully pleasing horizontal lines, which I'm I'm always all about. But first we should probably talk about stacking in general and why horizontal stacking itself is a thing. So way back in the day, back when this style of poi was called pendulum poi and not contact poi, Ronan McLaughlin had this style of spinning wherein he would create these lovely little vertical lines with the poi and do little bits of stalls and everything to get the poi to move along these lines up and down, right? And he referred to this style of spinning as stacking and it was one of those interesting cornerstones of a style that he's really carved out that's built around stillness as much as it is movement, which personally I love. Enter Mel. Specifically, a Russian poi spinner by the name of Ivan Gorbanov. Uh, he's more popularly known online as Mel or Anti Spinner if you happen to follow him on Instagram. He released a 10 minute long tech poi video a decade ago that was called Red Pants that included some of the first horizontal stacks the poi world had ever seen. And it's interesting because from what I gather, he never thought of them as being horizontal stacks. He thought of them as being variations on different style exercises and everything that just happened to create pleasing horizontal lines in the process. But other people watching them all of a sudden got a lot of ideas. Specifically, a poi spinner by the name of Leo Ikaza noticed that Mel's original stack was created by essentially chopping up bits and pieces of different flowers and pendulums and reassembling them in a different order. And he realized that you could do this with other types of flowers too. And thus, he released a video essentially putting together an entire foundational framework for how we could look at this new type of poi spinning that he christened horizontal stacks. So let's start off by learning the first stack that Mel was demonstrating in that video, which to this day I refer to as just being the Mel stack, partially because there's no other antecedents to it and also partially because I want to give Mel credit for inventing this entire field of poi spinning. So there's two pieces of this that are going to be absolutely essential for you to have underneath your belt. The first is a good knowledge of pendulums and the second is the ability to do top stalls. I'm sorry, but there's no way to do this without having those top stalls under your belt. So we're going to go ahead and start off with our hands up close to our ears. That is above our shoulders and everything. And yes, that is important. And we're going to start off by doing pendulums back and forth with the poi going in, out, in, out, in, out. The moment that's really important to us is when the poi are pointing inward towards each other. Uh, I want you to go ahead and pick a hand, I don't care which one, but that hand is going to come around and do a top stall and come back and do a second top stall. So think that the pattern there is going to be top stall, top stall, and then we go back to our pendulums, yeah? Again, it's going to be top stall, top stall, back to the pendulums. When we add this together with the other hand, we want it to look like we're creating two different horizontal lines, thinking line to the left, line in the center. Yeah? Line to the left, line in the center. It's really important that your other hand doesn't move at all. It just has the poi going straight back and forth in a normal pendulum. Yeah? Cool. So I want you to practice doing this 10 times, thinking top stall, top stall, and we're back, and top stall, top stall, and we're back. Yeah? Cool. And now it's time to do it with the opposite hand. Think that as those two poi come together and everything, now with my left hand, I'm going to think top stall, top stall, and back. And top stall, top stall, and back. If you need to take like three pendulums in between to find your bearings again, no big thing. But really do think that you're going to go back and forth as we go through this pattern. Yeah? All right, so now we have to alternate back and forth between the two. So coming from our home base of our pendulums and everything, I want you to think one, two, 
three, do the top stall with the right, and one, two, three, do the top stall with the left. Come back, and one, two, three, do the top stall with the right, and we do one, two, three, do the top stall with the left. Now, it's really, really, really essential that that top stall happens coming out of the moment when the poi is pointing inward towards the center. Some people will try and do this when the poi are pointed out to the side and find that that line no longer meshes up. Uh, I want you to do it when it's pointed towards the inside. We're gonna play with the outside in just a second here, yeah? Cool, so now try doing it off of twos. Thinking one, two, stall the right, and one, two, stall the left, and one, two, stall the right, and one, two, stall the left, yeah? All right, so now let's try doing just one pendulum in between those stalls, shall we? Thinking that we go in once, and then stall and back, and in once, and stall and back. Again, in once, and stall and back, and in once, and stall and back. So the last step of this is that we need to remove the weighting. That is, we're just going to go straight back and forth from side to side. Think that every time the poi are pointing inwards, you're switching off which hand is doing the stall. So think right stalls and back, left stalls and back, right stalls and back, left stalls and back. So if I were to troubleshoot one thing that I almost always see people first learning this trick doing, it would be this. Really, really, really think that on each side it is a stall and then a pendulum. A lot of people will turn that moment into something almost like a flower petal. And of course, as you can see, what that does is it takes away our lovely moment where we get our horizontal line in the middle. Really think of it as being stall, pendulum, stall, pendulum, stall, Pendulum, stall, pendulum. Look to nail those clean lines. It's so important for the uh, presentation of this look. Cool, so that's the Mel. But there's another stack that I wanna share with you too. So technically speaking, Mel does actually show off a version of this in his Red Pants video, but the first time I really saw it performed in a way that made it click for me was when my friend Charlie did it at Wildfire. So remember how I said that coming out of the pendulums, we were eventually gonna to come to a point where we were gonna think about when the pendulums are pointing to the outside rather than the inside? Well, we're here now. What I want you to do is do that top stall now when the poi are pointing outside rather than inside. So I'm gonna start with my right hand. I'm gonna drop it down and around, and oh, look at that. Now it matches up with the left hand poi as it's pointing inward and everything, like so. You can also do this on the other side with the left hand coming around and doing a stall inward with the uh, right hand poi. Again, right hand comes in and left hand comes in, and we have right hand come in, and we have left hand come in. Now, you'll notice this is slightly different from the stalls that we were just doing, because the, the top stalls we were doing in the Mel involve us going back and forth between top stalls, whereas this involves us taking what feels like more of a extension down for the first part of it before we do the top stall, yeah? We go from out to in, out, to in on either side, right? So then we can handle this the same way we did for the Mel. That is count off of the edges, three, two, one, have the right hand come around and back, and in, three, two, one, have the left hand come around and go back. Again, in three, two, one, right hand comes around, and in, three, two, one, the left hand comes around, and then go down to twos, thinking two, one, right comes around, and two, one, left comes around. Then just down to ones, thinking one, and the right comes around, and one, the left comes around. Before we work, I'm just going straight back and forth between the two, yeah? And it's here that I kind of want to dive into some of the theory because there's something very, very interesting to pick out about the difference between Mel's version of this pattern and that second version, which I sometimes call a Charlie. Namely, if I just think about what each hand is doing individually in the Mel as my hand goes back and forth between the pendulum and this stall pattern, the stall pattern actually reminds me quite a bit of if I took a two petal inspin flower and cut it in half. Whereas when I'm doing the Charlie version of this pattern, I feel like what I'm adding to the pendulum is what feels like a one petal inspin flower that's been cut in half. 
Interesting. So does that mean that there are other flower patterns that we can combine together with pendulums to create these horizontal stacking patterns? You betcha. So this is one of those places where your imagination can run wild, but I'll show you a couple examples nonetheless. Literally, you can take any kind of flower pattern that you want to and start playing around with it in such a way that if you cut it in half, it'll give you a new pattern for a horizontal stack. Amazing. So I hope you enjoyed that and I would really love to see your horizontal stacks. Please post them to Facebook and Instagram and use the hashtag DrexFactorPoi. Uh, you can also tag me in your stories with the at DrexFactor or at DrexFactorPoi and I'll go ahead and reshare those videos to my own stories. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to help other people find these videos too. Hey you! Guess what? This weekend, I am hosting the first ever DrexFest. That's right, my own online streaming event and flow festival. I've pulled together some of my favorite artists from across the world, including Nick Woolsey, Joe Faid, Ty Roachford, Liz Knights, and so many more, plus which some of my favorite musicians. You can go learn more about this over at crowdcast.io slash e slash DrexFest 2020. And hey, if you're watching this after the weekend of July 11th, when the event is, you can still go check out the entire thing on replay. Once again, that is crowdcast.io slash e slash DrexFest 2020. Please come join us. And a huge thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. They make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Um, if you would like to sign up to support this work that I do, if you have the means, and I understand if you don't, but if you do, I'd really appreciate it. You can head on over to patreon.com slash DrexFactorPoi and sign up. You can get early access to all of my content, as well as a say in what topics I tackle in the future. Plus, I post some behind the scenes stuff there on occasion too, so you should go check that out please and thank you. Awesome. So tell me, what is your favorite version of the horizontal stack? And would you like to see me do a more in-depth tutorial on those Ronin vertical stacks that I was showing earlier? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and have yourselves a good one. Peace.